it's like cutting to the end of the list too fast. We actually have a couple of other roasters here. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, put your hands together for Justin Schlegel. Everybody, yeah. Justin Schlegel. I remember when I first started doing comedy and I came to Wiseacres, which is one of the more well-known open mics. <laughs> I got to lay eyes on a one Mr. Brian McClure, and I thought to myself, this guy has the grace, and the poise, and the stage presence, and the confidence of Michael Ronan tap dancing while being stunned by bees. <laughs> bees with cerebral palsy. The most inspiring kind of bees. As I sat and I watched him flail around uncontrollably speaking some sort of gibberish known only to him and those in the home. <laughs> Carrie London leaned over to me, sipping his mojito and whispered in my head, Man, this guy's a faggot. <laughs> You're so young and so fresh-faced. So soft and so delicate. Five foot four? Five? Doesn't matter. <laughs> Brian is built like a nine-year-old boy with scoliosis. So should the theater of war ever move from the desert to a moon bounce, we'll know that our nation's tubes and ball balls are well taken care of. You see, seeing Brian go to war is very reminiscent of a very famous scene in a movie I think you all know when the Notre Dame Fighting Irish put in young Rudy. <laughs> A young boy with no talent and really no business being there. And I think that the outcome will be very similar as they carry him off the field on their shoulders. And the young Iraqi children pick through the remains that they weren't able to carry off. They're gonna die. You see, Brian has been assigned by the United States military to the 1st Armored Division because of his familiarity with tanking. <laughs> nice. He has also approved an additional $45,000 military budget so the Hummer that he's going to be riding in can be equipped with retrofitted child safety locks and a rear headrest LCD screen so he can watch the Wiggles while he's on patrol. <laughs> Brian, I will leave you with this. When you are overseas, in a hostile, in a foreign land, fighting for nation, fighting for God, fighting for country, fighting for your friends, fighting for everyone you see here before us, do this one thing for me and for everyone here tonight. Kill every fucking relative of Paul Sings that you can find. <laughs> Brian, good luck, buddy. bag of skin, a hairy bag of meat, ladies and gentlemen, Basil White. <laughs> Airman Brian McClure. What can I say about Brian that wasn't said by his teacher on his high school report card three years ago. <laughs> I'm just grateful that Brian was able to turn his developmental challenges into a craft. The Air Force. <laughs> I met Brian about two years ago. Well, that was the first time I worked with him. He was uh, opening up for me. And he went over to my wife and he was still a nervous drinker. So, so far away. <laughs> He looked at my wife Amy and said, I'm only going to have two beers. <laughs> and Amy goes, okay, pussy. <laughs> We've gone so far since then. Air Force in its infinite wisdom has selected Airman Brian McClure to fight America's global war on terror. 
And I can't help but think, who goes to war wearing blue? <laughs> I know I shouldn't make fun of the Civil Air Patrol. They got flashlights and everything. <laughs> but Brian's going to be okay. Because the Air Force sends their officers to fight. That's right, Lieutenant. You get that F-16 and you kick ass for America. I'm going to be back here rotating the tires in the motor pool and having some more of this delicious mouthwash. <laughs> but I knew when Brian said they were going to deploy him, I knew he was going to Iraq. Because I knew if the Air Force sent him to Afghanistan, he'd be over there trading bombs for heroin. <laughs> Good call, Air Force. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. It's fucking wide open. Okay, uh, speaking of a wide open calendar, um, <laughs>